Hey everybody and welcome back to another video. My name's Blue and today I'm going to be showing you how to use Slavs or Streamlabs OPS. All the links and websites, I'll link that down below, such as your stream keys and stuff like that you'll need to find. We'll begin with the basics, obviously, where to get it and how to set it up. So if you navigate to streamlabs.com and under the products in the top right, if you go to that, you'll find a download link. It says it's currently in beta, don't worry. From there, once downloaded and installed, your page looks something like this. You'll be allowed to import your settings from OBS if you're switching over or start anew. If you're starting anew, your page will look something like this. It's pretty barren. It should tell you about your desktop audio, your mic, anything that's on default right now. So if you wanna start, you can make a scene. So I wanna call this scene something like YouTube because I wanna record. Or if I wanted to stream, so let's say it's called Twitch. So this is my scene. A scene is just a collection of sources and audio that basically is everything that people are going to see on the stream. And you can switch between them with transitions. If you navigate to the top right here, you can edit your scene transitions. It's currently on cut and your type is stinger. That's your custom. That's where you can add your video transitions. Basically, that's a video. So I'm gonna log in for us and I'm gonna log in with Twitch, the whole pajazz. Now your page should look something like this if you are signed in. You'll have access to your dashboard, your CloudBot, App Store, your website if you have one, themes, editor, and live. Live shows you everything that's happening on your stream. From there, you'll find chat, events, that sort of thing. It's loading, basically. So you can see that my friends have followed, people who have watched me have followed. I don't know some of these people, so that's nice. I get to see that. And if I had a chat, they'd appear on the right here. And from there, I can see everything that's going on. So to start, a scene is something like a collection of sources and audio that is everything that's currently on your screen for people to look at and hear. So if we make a new scene, or just leave that be, but if we make a new scene, call it Twitch or Tutorial. So we're gonna call this one Tutorial, basically. And we're gonna be editing Tutorial today. If I wanted to show someone my screen, or make a folder because I clicked folder, I just need to press this plus like I did for the scene. So I wanna add my display. So I just hit display capture. And if you wanted to play a game, you just hit game capture and you'd pick the window with your game. I'll show you that as well. So right here, if I added a game source, capture any full screen application might be your default, capture specific window and pick the window. From there, you'll be able to find whatever window you want. Windows are your games, anything that's full screened or otherwise, and it'll capture specifically that at the resolution. If you want to scale it automatically, you can select that here, but that's only for minimized applications, sorry. And if it has .mov, you can allow transparencies. Easy enough to understand, right? All right. So I'm going to remove that because we don't need it right now. So I'm going to find display capture and I want to display my second screen. And there my YouTube. Oh my God. Uh, where did that come from? Uh, subscribe. Mm. But right now you can see my second screen and that would be where I was playing games or whatever. And down here is where I would be doing all of my kerfuffle basically. And right now we're in the editor. And you can see your chat log from the editor. Okay, so I did that. Now, say I wanted, this is all your audio here, by the way. This is how you control your decibels, which means your audio levels. And this is not for you, this is for them. So the output is what's here. So all you gotta do is just click on the setting basically thing, the cog, and go to properties if you wanted to change this to a specific microphone. And if you wanted to add another source, you just go up here, you press plus, and all you need to do is just add a input or output, depending on if it was a speaker or a mic. Okay, simple enough, right? So once you've got all that set up, your desktop, your mic, and your display, you, you might think, I'm ready, and I can just press the go live button or the record button. But some might not be so lucky. Some might need extra settings. You might need extra settings, basically. So we're gonna go to that. But before then, I'm gonna show you the dashboard and theme section. So if you go to your dashboard, it shows you all of your 
activity recently. You can go to your widgets and add something like an alert box, a chat box, or a donation goal, an event list, that sort of thing. And all these things are things you can use as like little widgets. Widgets are things that go on top of everything. Blah, blah, blah. They have tutorials of their own. They're not very good. So if you copy this widget URL, whatever you have up here, you can copy it, go back to your editor, and add a new source. We're going to add a browser source and basically take that URL that we just got and add it as a source. And from here, you can change the FPS, that sort of thing, how fast it is, 30 is more than enough. And once you put it in there, you can basically use whatever you have preset up there as your stream thing. Okay, that sounds good, right? So we're gonna go to one I've already made that I use currently and show you what it looks like. So currently, I use something of a streaming, and that's my transition. And that is my alert box for all my events. From here, you can see my display, so I'm going to put the top display on, and you can see everything that goes on here. I, I have my chat box. If I was going live, that would appear there. My event list and my alerts saying someone subscribed in a little cute way and a little noise. And, I'll, and that's stuff that you can find and all managed from here on the dashboard. So you can go back to the dashboard and you can pick all your widgets and put them accordingly. Allow your viewers to donate to share media to your stream, uh, your viewer account, your donation ticker, and credits to show all your supporters, and that sort of thing. I recommend looking into this because this will add some sort of a uh, interactiveness to your stream, basically. All right, so we've shown you live and all that stuff. If you go to themes, you'll be able to add these theme packs or your own. Basically, if I wanted to add a theme pack, I just click it and install the overlay. And from there, we would install and you just move things. Now, this girl has a webcam. I have a webcam. How do I set it up? Well, all you'd need to do is just add a source and add a capture. So you would pick which one? There we go. Video capture device. Sorry. It was, I was looking everywhere about that. But if you add a video capture device, you'd see that I don't have it active. There we go. You can see me, basically. I'm going to turn that off because no one wants to see me. So if you basically turn that on and off, you can move things over your overlay basically making your stream look nice. All these widgets make you interactive and basically a more fitting streamer for people to talk to. Okay, so let's get to the meat of it, the settings. You wanna ask questions. But my stream's blurry like this and it's super pixely and it pauses. How do I fix that? Uh, my recordings aren't the best. What do I do? Well, how do I even stream? I've got all those questions and answers right here. Currently, how do you stream? You're going to need a stream key. All the links to YouTube and Twitch stream keys are in the description. These are your personal ones. You have to sign in and go to these links. And from there, you'll see the stream key, which you copy and place here. Once placed and put in, when you go live, it'll stream to that key and the channel that's connected to. And everything that comes from that will come to you. Basically like that, that works. Now streaming. If I wanted to have multiple channel audio, like I do here, if I clicked animated uh, advanced settings, basically, I have separated audio, one, three, and two. Now this doesn't work for streaming. We only work it with one audio track. So if I set up multi-channel audio, why isn't my, my mic and my discord and whatever I have uh, included? It's because it's single channel audio for streaming. So if you have issues with that, then select it as six or five or whatever, and don't include it in anything else but your stream. So you would go to your settings, after you select them, every one you wanna use as six or whatever, go to your output, stream, audio track, and whatever one you set them to. And all the ones under that number will appear on your stream and be able to be heard. Okay, so that's how to fix that issue. Hardware encoder. 
I would not choose 264. If you have NVENC, that means you have a NVIDIA graphics card. Pick that. If you have an AMD here, you have an AMD graphics card, something like an FX or something like that. Uh, pick that. That basically takes the weight off of your CPU and allows you to have a better recording experience. Do it. In force streaming encoder settings, you would use that to make sure that it's using the settings you use here in the streaming rather than your recording settings if it was switching. Your rate control is CBR, constant bit rate, or CQP, uh, constant quintessential parameter. Quantinential parameter, basically. VBR, uh, variable bit rate, and uh, lossless. Never use lossless for streaming or anything, really, because it's the biggest size. The higher the quality setting for these things, the bigger the size video if you're recording. And you don't want to do that. So try CBR and try a bit rate of 2500, 2500 and go up from there. Do test streams. If you go too high, your stream might become blurry, or if it's too low, it might become blurry. Trying to find the sweet spot in between that. You want to make sure that people can hear you and you aren't cutting out. Your keyframe interval should be two. Your preset, you can set to low latency and move up from there, depending. Mine's on quality and high because I'm connected to the ethernet and have a pretty good source of internet so i'm okay from the rest of this you don't touch you don't need to touch basically people have touched uh people have touched this b frames but they've seen diminishing returns basically nothing fantastic to write home about here you can select your recording format i've selected mp4 as it's the one that supports multiple channel audio and it's the most recognized so i would use that if you use ts and m3u8 that's usually for Elgato and things like uh, GoPros and things like that. Those that are recording formats. And MOV is Apple. So if you want an Apple, that's what you use. You can use Apple things on a Mac, but you need QuickTime. I actually use that to use to put uh, videos in my stream. MOV is a, a great way to do that. So on recording, I use constant quintessential parameter. Uh, and that means I can set this level between 15 and 20. That's what I usually set it at. 17 is the sweet spot for me. I wouldn't set it to 15. The lower the number, the higher your file size. And at some point, you're not getting a good enough returning quality for the amount of file size, basically. Because if you aren't recording... In 4K or 8K, you're not going to need something extravagant. It's 1080p, it's 720p, you're fine. Keyframe interval is zero, so that it's perfect frame by frame paste. And your quality preset, the same thing uh, and as your profile, which can either be main or high. Most people don't choose baseline. And the same thing here, I don't touch the bottom. For your audio, set your bitrate to 320. That's the best. So set it. Why not? So I've named my audio sources that I've set here for multi-channel audio. So I know mine's on channel one is desktop, and the one on channel two is Discord and microphone, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. I set the rest at 320, but I haven't touched them. Just in case I want to switch and add resources on the fly, but don't want to come back here. Either way, it doesn't affect me. So, if I go up here to replay buffer, this adds replay time to your stream. It it's a, basically helps you. Just leave all that on default. Your audio, set it at 48 hertz. If you have a higher option, use the higher option. This is your sample rate for all your audio. 48 hertz is good. Use stereo, whatever you have. I've set all these to whatever I need to, to be set at. These are my audio sources. So if I go to video, you should see this. 1080p, 60 frames. That's what I'm recording at. If you can't handle it, if you have a smaller machine, 720p at 60 frames is much better than 1080p at 30 frames. Just remember that. I'd recommend using bi-cubic. Don't use bi-near 
if you're streaming, if you plan to stream, because it will blur if you're scaling down. That won't help your performance. It won't help your look, basically. Set the common FPS values to regular, blah, blah, blah. From there, you can sign hotkeys. Uh, your process priority for the application means how you want your CPU to regard this. Is it the most important thing? Is recording the most important thing as opposed to this? I would leave it alone. That's just for technical stuff. For video, all of that stuff can be left alone. You can move things around your screens and that sort of thing. These are your scene collections, your notifications, and your appearance and your remote control that you can use from your phone. All these things are pretty self-explanatory from there. You can move things around your screen and you can scale them with the corners and basically you're set. If you press control Z, you go back uh, and undo what you just did. But that's pretty much it. You, I've shown you today how to use OBS Streamlabs and how to add sources, how scenes work, and how to add and change your audio. You got your levels and all that stuff. You even know what transitions are. Remember, if any of this helped you, leave a like, leave a comment. You can help this channel grow just by interacting. So thanks for watching the video. Well, goodbye. Thanks for watching.